much, uh, Senator Nelson. Senator Ayotte. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Secretary Panetta. Thank you, General Dempsey. Uh, I would like to ask about the role of China and Russia here. Um, let me just say up front, I assure you, I'm sure you'll agree that it's outrageous that China and Russia blocked the UN resolutions, and uh, both of them and also most recently in February. As I understand it, according to the Center for Strategic and International Studies, a report that was issued in June of 2010, uh, that the arms imports from Russia to Syria between 1997 and 2008, that really Russia has been a leading arms supplier to the Assad regime. Um, is that the case? That's true. And uh, do they continue to provide arms to the Assad regime now? Yes, Senator, they do. So Russia is continuing to provide arms to the Assad regime as they murder their own people? They have a uh, long-standing foreign military sales relationship with them, and it, it continues on unabated. And it doesn't seem to matter to Russia at all that they are using these arms to murder their own people. It's outrageous. As I understand it, China has also provided in the past arms to the Assad regime as well, to a lesser extent. I'm, I'm, I, let, let me get back to you because we, I, you know, there are other areas of assistance, but uh, I'm not sure about arms. Okay. Well, I would appreciate a follow-up to that, uh, but they certainly, to some extent, have provided assistance to the Assad regime in the past. Do we know if they're providing any assistance now of any type? No, I haven't been uh, tracking uh, intelligence on on China's role in arms sales. Iran and you noted Russia from the report. But I, th I, think, I think economically they have had ties into uh, Syria that are, you know, they, they still are trying to maintain. Is it not true also uh, that with respect to our posture with Iran in terms of wanting to impose the toughest economic sanctions possible to ensure that Iran does not develop n nuclear weapons capability that Iran uh, Russia and China are a key to that uh, because we know that uh, Russia has an, actually an economic interest, unfortunately, in the Iranian nuclear program and that China relies heavily on Iran for oil exports. Is that not true? Correct. And yet they have failed also to step up to the plate um, to impose the types of tougher sanctions we would like them to do so that the world is together to stop Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons capability. Is that not true? You're correct. So what can we do to be uh, tougher on Russia and China if they are going to take uh, their position in the world uh, as part of the world leadership? Uh, I view their behavior in blocking the UN resolution as irresponsible and also the fact that they haven't stepped up to the plate to make sure that we stop Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons capability. It's all related and it's obviously very detrimental to the safety of the world. Uh, what should we be doing there to be tougher on them? Because I, I think, think we uh, need to. I mean, I, obviously, uh, you, you should hear this directly from uh, Secretary Clinton, but uh, you know, my, uh, my knowledge is uh, that uh, Secretary Clinton is exhausting every effort to try to engage uh, both Russia and China in this effort, particularly Russia, because as I said, Russia, because of its long-standing relationship there, because it has, it owns a harbor uh, in Syria uh, and uh, has the record that you just described with Syria, that uh, Russia uh, could, if they wanted to accept the responsibility that they should, uh, they, could, they could be helpful here in uh, the effort to try to remove Assad. Well, I appreciate that, those efforts, and, you know, Mr. Putin just got reelected, and I would hope that he wouldn't want the blood of the deaths of Syrians on his hands, and that he would stop selling arms to the Assad regime, and of course, that both Russia and China would step up, support the UN resolution, and uh, both those countries, in my view, I don't know why they would want, not want to pursue every possible means uh, to stop what is happening in the bloodshed there. So I appreciate all of your efforts on it, and I hope, uh, 
I hope that they understand that we're very serious about that and we will in the Congress look at actions we can take too uh, because this is really wrong and they're on the wrong side of history uh, both with this respect to the Syrian regime they're on the wrong side of history with respect to Iran and uh, they will look back at this as a big mistake by both of these countries if they don't step up to the plate right now. Um, I also wanted to ask about uh, the Assad regime's relationship uh, just with some of the groups that we've labeled terrorist groups. Uh, what's the Assad regime's relationship with Hezbollah? The, uh, again, I, I think that's probably better addressed in a closed session okay. in terms of the specific relationship. But uh, there has been a long-standing relationship uh, between Hezbollah and Syria. It's, it's actually diminished of late. Uh, uh, Hezbollah has kind of uh, stood aside while uh, what's and and hasn't directly been involved in some of the situation, some of the violence that's taken place in Syria. Okay, thank you. And also with Hamas. Hamas, the same same thing. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, as I understand it, at least based on public reports, uh, Hamas is actually stepping back from the situation, yet Iran has not stepped back. Correct. They're continuing to push forward. That's right. Uh, let me ask you, does the violence that's happening in Syria have any impact on stability in Iraq? Uh, Inter I mean, interestingly, uh, we, uh, you know, it, uh, there, there was a point at which, uh, obviously, uh, Iraq was kind of standing to the side uh, and not uh, engaged. And I think, as a result of uh, of what they se they've seen happening in Syria, uh, that uh, Iraq itself has now asked for uh, Assad to step down, uh, and uh, they are, let me put it this way, they are more engaged than they were in the past. Do you view this as a positive step? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you both. My time is up. I appreciate your being before the committee today on such an important issue. Thank you, thank you Senator A.